What's up? Here we are with the top three old school bass fishing lures in the fall. That's right. We're not talking about that forward facing sonar stuff. Man, put that stuff in the garbage can. We're going old school here. I'm going to give you the three baits. If you're going out there, you're just going to hit the bank, have a little fun, or you're going to just jump out there in a kayak, canoe or small boat, something like that. Or you just want to go bass fishing old school. Maybe you have the technology and you want to say, you know what? I'm going to put it on the shelf for a fishing trip or two. Here's the top three baits. I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit about where and how to use each one. Now these kind of cover all the depths and all the applications that you're probably going to be looking at in this fall transition period. Uh, we're going from summer into the winter. That fall period, we're going to be focused on a lot of bait fish action, but not exclusively. Not exclusively. I just want to get that out right off the right off the bat. So, my number one fall lure is in, for most places. Now, this is not as much for extremely grassy places, but places that do not have grass, it is going to be a jig. Uh, fishing a jig in the fall is an awesome way to catch big ones, and you can catch numbers uh, just wherever you want to get bit. In the fall, the jig, this is the missile jigs, mini flip jig. I really like the one half ounce size. The three eighths has a little slower fall, great in the springtime, but the half ounce size has a little faster fall. You get more of those reaction bites as it's falling. And when it's on the bottom, you can also drag it and that, that half ounce ticking across the rocks does trigger strikes or it could get down to the bottom and then you can hop it. It's gonna hop, come up, and then shoot back down pretty quick. Uh, I'm gonna be fishing that on 20 pound fluoro. I usually use the, you know, the sun line and just a cash and flipping stick, seven six, nothing crazy. You want at least a seven foot rod here because you wanna be able to pile drive that hook set. But it's got a good, good VMC trailer. And I like natural colors in the fall. Uh, this is a bluegill color, just kind of a green pumpkin-y. Looks like a, a bluegill type color. Uh, and this is a little mini D-chunk trailer on the back and just you know, anything in that green pumpkin realm is gonna work for you. Uh, I've had, like I said, I've had a lot of success in the fall on this, especially in those lakes without it, you know, we're talking docks, laydowns, bluff walls, anything like that, any type of cover you can visually see, throw that jig by there and work it slowly out. Uh, sometimes slow can be key in the fall. Sometimes they want that reaction. So you might need to hop it or you'll get that bite on the initial fall. So that's my number one bait, old school bait for the fall fishing. Number two, we're gonna have some fun right here, boys and girls. This is this is probably most people's most fun and you heard it, you can probably hear it. That's right, the buzz bait. And it's nothing, buzz bait's nothing new. It's been around for a long, long time. I really like a white buzz bait in the fall. Anytime you get shallow, you have a little bit of stain in the water and you have a little bit of shad action that you can see. Any type of bait fish action in the fall. Now this is really good in lakes that do have grass. That buzz bait along those grass lines, especially once you get towards the backs of the pockets or just any grass line that you can see some bait fish present, especially early morning. Now if you have grass, you're probably having gonna have a little bit clearer water. That's okay. It'll still work as long as you have some of those conditions like a little bit of wind or you have something like uh, like low light conditions early in the morning, rainy conditions. Dude, I have had some tremendous days in the rain with a buzz bait around grass. Don't 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 hang it up and go go back to the house, man. Put that put that striker suit on. Get out there and go go fishing and smash them on that buzz bait. Now I'm gonna throw that on say 35 pound uh, Sunline braid. It's the AMZ braid, real smooth. You want something smooth? I like braid way better than mono, uh, but you, if you do that, you wanna make sure you have a rod that has some give to it. You don't want a rod that's too stiff. This is a, a Cashin swim jig rod. It's got a nice moderate action to it. And then you wanna have a high speed reel. Daiwa uh, Zillion is what I use, the eight to one. You want that high speed, but you, you can use you know, kind, of, kind of whatever, as long as your rod's not too stiff, uh, got a little bit of give to it. Throw that braid on it and that buzz bait. I cover a lot of water. A lot of backs of pockets. Um, you might you might go through stretches where you don't catch anything, but all of a sudden when you do get one of those bites, kaboom! Could be old big head, 
could be a three pounder, it could be a 12 incher. You never know, you do catch all sizes. I do know that the, oh, that the uh, Big Bass Tournament just recently on Smith Mountain Lake was won on the old Buzz Chicken. That's right, was won on the old Buzz Chicken with an eight pounder. Duke got an eight pounder on a buzz bait with a little swim bait on the back. That's a Shockwave 3.5. I don't like a big swim bait on there. I like something a little, bit, a little smaller, a little more compact. A lot of people throw like a horny toad on their buzz baits. Whatever you're, you're confident in throwing, you've had good success on in the past, that's what I would, I mean, this is exactly what I would be throwing if I was throwing it right now. Uh, so that's why I thought I would show you that. But now we're up to number three, old school baits for the fall. And that's right, it's my good buddy, ball and chain, old Mr. Sea Rig. And that Sea Rig, I love it in the summertime. Uh, a lot of, I talk a lot about that. But that ball and chain in the fall can be really good. A lot of people kind of like, you know, sleep on it or, or get away from it. Dude, that ball and chain can be really good. A lot of the lakes are starting to drop. They're starting to come down. You want to throw this on almost exclusively points or gravelly type banks. Now, the, the points are going to be a little bit uh, harder bottom just naturally. Uh, the ones that have a little bit of gravel on them are probably going to be key and they can be a very subtle point. They don't have to be like this huge giant uh, point that runs way out into the lake, like the, the, the biggest point in the lake. That, they don't have to be that. They can be little shorter points. Uh, they can be a little more subtle. They can be points towards the backs of pockets, uh, secondary points as they call them. The, all of those can, can hold fish. And when I'm throwing the, the Carolina rig in the fall, I'm throwing that thing all the way up into two feet of water and I'm going to drag it all the way out to 20. I'm going to find where those fish are on that point. You'll, you'll, some days they might be pushed up on the point. Maybe they're, they're pushing bait fish up on there and they're up sitting shallow two, three, four feet of water. And you'll throw way up there to the bank and you lift up and you drag it one foot. Thunk, one gets it. That, that does happen in the fall, especially. Uh, so I, I like the Carolina rig, places like that. Uh, and, and I usually put a half to a three quarter ounce weight on there. Now, sometimes you might wanna upsize your weight to a one ounce. If you don't have very much cover, uh, lakes like uh, Lake Murray, Bugs Island, things like that, you may wanna upsize, I like the cylinder shape. You may wanna upsize that to say like a one ounce um, don't be afraid to go heavy like that, or you can go to a three quarter. If you've got more cover, like more uh, jagged rock, you may want to downsize to a half ounce, but the, the principle is you want to fish as heavy as you can get away with. I like the little bead and the little clacker and then the Spro Power Swivel. And then I'm gonna have my, my leader. I usually have 14 pound Sunline Shooters, my leader. And you know, it's probably three feet two to three feet, I think is all the, don't get hung up in the length a lot. And then my, my number one bait for, for Carolina rig is a Missile Baits Baby Destroyer. That I've just caught so many on that. Even in the fall, I've caught some really big ones. You can catch numbers, a lot of 12, 13, 14 inches if you're just trying to put fish in the boat. And then a uh, Gamagatsu a 3 aught offset shank, round bend worm hook is tried and true, boys and girls. I'm talking like hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of fish on that hook for me with the old sea rig. Uh, and then 7.3, medium heavy caching rod and a high speed Daiwa zillion reel. Uh, but high speed reel is key. That way you can, uh, that fish bites it, you can reel quickly and reel up a lot of slack. And then you're gonna do all the, the hook set is just basically a long sweep. You're just gonna reel up all of that slack until you feel the fish. Then you're just gonna do a long sweeping hook set, let that rod load. You make about three cranks, you feel that head shake, it is a done deal. We're talking brown fish, spotted bass, and largemouth on that sea rig in the fall, boys and girls. Don't sleep on that, on that sea rig, mostly on the points and those gravel banks. Uh, you do those three old school techniques and baits that I just told you. You go out there and you have some fun this, this uh, fall and you don't even have to think about all that technology. Go out there, have fun, old school style.